can. It's kind of crazy how the highlight of my day is eating my snacks and watching Netflix. So I'm gonna film this video so I can get back to that. So I would like to talk about how to get close to an INFP and the several different things that can help you get close to an INFP. Now, INFPs are very diverse as a type. They are probably one of the most diverse, um, partly because of their values. They value things that are important to them, but what may be important to them isn't the same for every INFP. So INFPs can be very different. I'm not saying all the INFPs are gonna let you get close to them if you follow these but my video about how to tell if an INFP has a crush on you was pretty well received and a lot of INFPs were saying that they related a lot to what I was saying in my video. So one of the main things you can do to help get close to an INFP is lots of delicately balanced, consistent, persistent time with them. Now, please watch the rest of the video and not just be like, okay, that's it. Because <laughs> I have um, a lot more to say that I think you'll find helpful. About spending time, this is especially important for INFPs whose main love language is quality time. I think it's a common love language for INFPs. Love languages are like the things you can do to like, that makes someone feel loved. Not everyone has the same. Some value other love languages better than others, such as like giving gifts, like verbal affirmation and things like that. Quality time is very important for me as an INFP, especially when it comes to building a relationship with someone. I mean, obviously for anyone trying to build a relationship, quality time is important. But the other things I said, like consistent and persistent, time is I think one of the keys. So like if you're trying to get to know an INFP, like being persistent in like, you know, making time to be with them and talk to them and to not just like write them off as like, oh, they seem kind of like shy, like they probably don't want to talk and to just like give up. I mean, sometimes an INFP may not be interested, but sometimes they will be. And I feel like you will get a vibe, like, if they don't, like, if they're just not interested in talking to you, like, I don't know where I'm going with this. Like, you'll probably get a vibe, whether it's, like, if you're interested in getting to know an INFP, if you want to get close to them. Being, I would say, like, gently persistent is a really good way of, you know, kind of, like, nudging your way into their life. The consistency I find very important it might just be because of like the variables that make me up as an INFP and like other things. But consistency is important to me in a person. If someone is being inconsistent, it makes me not trust them. And if I don't trust them, I'm not going to get close to them. So consistency is very important. So if you are being persistent, being consistent in your interest, your words, doing what you say you're gonna do, if you're hanging out with them, keeping those plans. Like, people who cancel plans, like, I know that's kind of weird because, like, INFPs can be kind of inconsistent in themselves, but, like, it's actually pretty common that they don't tend to like it in other people, which is kind of, like, hypocritical. But, like, it really bothers me if, like, someone cancels plans, like, especially more than once, because, like, it takes a lot for INFPs to, like, prepare themselves for, like, an outing or, like, an event or something or, like, meeting up somewhere. So, like, if they're, like, totally, they've spent a while, like, getting mentally and physically prepared and then someone is just like, oh, yeah, I'm canceling. Like, it's just not a good feeling. And if it happens more than once, for me at least, it makes me, like mistrust that they're going to be consistent and then that makes me not want to get close to them because I don't feel like I can trust them to be consistent. About the delicately balanced, that would be finding a balance between not being too aggressive and taking enough initiative. Like I said, it's kind of like, okay, I would say that like INFPs are hard to get to know. 
coming from an INFP. So like if you're expecting them to be like an extrovert and just like immediately open up and like get close to you and be best friends, like that's not gonna happen. Unless they're like a very extroverted INFP and have like no shyness issues or anxiety or anything. But most INFPs keep their cards close to their chest. You have to like earn your way to get close to them. So not being too aggressive. If you're too aggressive, you may scare them away. Especially if it's romantically, like aggressively like hitting on them and like asking them questions about what they want in someone romantically. Like I've had that happen before and I'm just like, bye. <laughs> And then even in like friendship wise, like I've had someone come on strong and like trying to get to know me and that kind of freaked me out a little bit. Like I know like I also have like avoidant personality disorder and of course that involves like a tendency to like avoid people and also like mistrust, fear, well I'll get to that later, a fear of criticism and also like of getting close. So like for me, it takes a long time to build up a connection with someone usually. Not always. It really depends on the context. Like I've had online friends that I've developed friendships with in like a couple months and then, you know, like I consider them my close friends. That was like a couple years ago though. And I think that's because like online you tend to like cut through all the like crap that you have to go through in real life and you just get like right to the heart of like situations. So like in some ways it can be easier to like develop friendships online because like for one thing it's easier for INFPs to like talk online like through written form rather than verbally. It's also like easier for them to open up and talk I would say like through written form rather than having to say it to you like face to face. I mean yeah I don't know how I got on this part but meeting INFPs on the internet could be like a jump start to getting close to them because they tend to be more open online than they are in real life. Anyway, um, but yeah, I had this person whose profile looked very extroverted who messaged me and like wanted to be friends or wanted to talk to me, I guess. And it just kind of like, it felt like, I don't know, like I'm sure she's like a wonderful person, but it just kind of freaked me out. So you kind of have to be, yeah, like I said, delicately balanced in approaching INFPs to get close to them. And then you also have to take some initiative because to be honest, INFPs are not usually initiators. So if you want to get close to an INFP, you're probably going to have to make the first move. You're going to have to like put some effort into being like persistent, consistent, and spending time with them talking to them, learning about them, you know, stuff like that. So if you can find a balance between not being too aggressive but also initiating some, then that will help you get close to an INFP. Another thing that will help you get close is if you have a non-judgmental attitude. I feel like the importance of this is underestimated because, I mean, <laughs> let's face it, INFPs can be sensitive and they can sense if you're judging them and that does not want to make them open up. So you can work on it if you tend to be a like judgmental person, I guess, then maybe you can like consciously work on that if you're trying to get close to an INFP or at least like not let them like see you judging them. But I think it helps if you just naturally have a non-judgmental attitude towards other people, or at least towards the INFP. Because if an INFP senses you judging them, that doesn't make them feel accepted. And that does not want to make them get close to you because they don't feel like you accept them. Um, I can think of an example of feeling judged like when I showed like a girl I was kind of interested in being friends with my dorm room. And it was kind of messy, because like, be real, I'm an INFP. <laughs> and I could feel her like judging the messiness because I guess she was like a really neat person. And like, I could just see her like looking around the room and like, I don't remember what she said, but I just remember feeling like she's totally judging my messiness right now. And that made me trust her less and want to be her friend less because I'm like, she doesn't accept 
respect that part of me, like. And some INFPs can go overboard and it's like, if you don't accept that, like, you don't accept any of me, like, it's either that is, like, all or nothing. Like, I don't know. But I know for me, um, non-judgmental people, like, really help me feel like it's okay to, like, be myself. And I think that's, like, a key in getting close to an INFP is if you can make them feel like it's okay for them to open up and be themselves and you're not gonna, like, judge them or, like, make fun of them or, like, put them down or criticize them for, like, being who they are because a lot of people do that and a lot of people don't accept INFPs. That will go along the lines of also people who say, like, why are you so quiet? That's actually a very judgmental statement because you're basically saying, like, I don't like that you're quiet. I'm not, like, accepting that you're quiet. And I don't think I would ever become friends with someone who said that to me because normally whenever someone says something along the lines of that, I just think, okay, they like really want me to be more talkative and they don't accept that I'm quiet. And that's kind of an issue because like, that's who I am. Like, I'm not just gonna change not being quiet. So yeah, basically there are two main things that will help you become close to an INFP. Safety and trust. Those are like the golden pair that will help you get close to an INFP. Make them feel safe by accepting them, not judging them, making them feel safe to be who they are, being consistent and making them feel safe that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. You're going to meet them when you say you're going to meet them, that they can rely on you. And then the trust, where it's like they trust that you're the type of person that they would be able to get close to, that you're going to be persistent, you're not going to give up on them, you're not going to change your mind about them, you can trust that you can reveal your true self to them, and trust that like you're worthy of like what they have to give to you. Because I know that's also a thing where it's like, INFPs won't open up if they think people aren't going to appreciate it. So like, they may have something to contribute to the conversation or something, and they may not just say it because they feel like it's not worth it. And like, the people involved like aren't going to care about like, what they're going to say, and what they're going to say is like, important to them and valuable. So it's like, we're not just going to like, throw our valuable like, pieces of ourselves to just get like trampled in the mud like you know what I mean like another thing is that authenticity is huge for INFPs of course and basically like be authentic if we feel like you're seeming fake uh like we're not gonna want to get close to you that also like comes down to sometimes observation like we may observe how you interact with other people and how you interact with us and like whether like we think you really want to like get close to us or not. Like sometimes it may seem like you're not. So another thing that goes along with the quality time would be talk to INFPs one-on-one -on -one, rather in groups. That will help you so much in developing a personal relationship with them because when we're in groups, we tend to get quieter, shyer, we don't talk as much like not that we talk a lot to begin with at least most INFPs and it's very hard for us to like open up when there's like a bunch of people around so like I know like I generally prefer one-on-one -on -one just because like I like focusing on like one person having like I don't know like deep conversations with them and stuff and I just like spending time with people one-on-one -on -one. so that is also something you can do if you want to get close to an INFP and the final thing is it might just come down to how your personality meshes with them and what things you have in common with them. That's not really something you can help. It's like you either have it or you don't. Like you either have things in common with them or you don't. Like your personality is who you are. So I mean, I would think that if you're interested in getting close to an INFP, then you might have some compatibility. But like, I don't know. 
it might just not work out just because like I know like I can be very picky and like what kind of personalities I feel meshed with and also like if I don't feel like I have a lot in common with the person I'm not really gonna want to become friends with them I'm just being honest so I would explore like what kind of things you have in common with them it could even be stuff like movies like a lot of NFPs like fantasy animals nature reading writing so find out if you have anything in common and you could bond over that and become closer to them so I hope this helped you if you're interested in getting close to an INFP please leave comments they're like the highlight of my videos I love reading them this is the first video I'm filming in another country I'm in London right now studying abroad and yeah it's been an experience <laughs> So yeah, shout out to like people watching this from England and I will see you next time. Bye.